So in this video, I'll show you how to set up a customer support agent with a built-in ticketing dashboard without using code. Now I've built this system for my own circle community to help people get faster answers to their tech questions, but it can easily be adjusted to any other community platform like school, uh, Discord, Slack, WhatsApp, or Facebook, and can even be used for customer support through email or websites. And the template will be completely for free in the link in the description below. This agent searches through past community questions and uses perplexity to resolve issues. Everything's managed in an Airtable uh, ticketing dashboard, which updates statuses automatically. Now, if you don't know me yet, I'm Ben. I run an AI agency since 2023. Since then, uh, we've helped more than 50 businesses implement AI and automation into their business. I also run a community where we help founders and business owners use AI in their business. And if you want to work directly with me and my agency, you can also book us in for a free call in the description below. So I'll first show you a quick demo and then a breakdown of the system. Again, if you want to copy and paste the template, the template will be available for free in the description below. And if you maybe want to adjust it to your specific use case and you want one-on-one -on -one tech help, you can also check out my community. Now, the whole reason behind this system is because we want to help, uh, help people inside of my community as fast as possible with their tech questions. And so basically this system gets triggered as soon as someone in my uh, community uh, posts a tech question or needs tech help. And what will happen first is this first part of the automation will be triggered where it gets the circle post. It will uh, create an Airtable ticket. And then our AI agent is going to search through past uh, community questions and answers and use perplexity to try and resolve uh, the issue and post a comment back. So I can show you a quick example of a comment back. Um, so if we take this one, uh, how to start connecting uh, whatever Lovable comes up with, with uh, NADN. So how to start connecting NADN with Lovable. And here we have the AI agent. Hi there, it's great that you're exploring uh, possibilities, steps to follow, understand the basic integration pattern, lovable access to the user interface. Uh, this input sent to NADN via webhook, setting up the NADN workflow, et cetera, et cetera. And it gives you some additional resources uh, about your specific question. And sometimes it will link back to a, a post we had earlier about a, a similar topic, All right? So it will also give the confidence level of the answer uh, and uh, that's basically it. So besides that, of course, it creates a new ticket in uh, our Airtable ticketing dashboard. So that looks like this. Uh, here, basically, all the new uh, tech questions come in. And then we have a few statuses to make sure that we resolve all the tech issues inside of the community. So we have not replied, replied, solved, and urgent resolution. Now, that's the second part of the automation, which is the checking uh, the status of uh, the post or the tech question, if it's actually resolved or not. Now we do this because sometimes, of course, you need to go uh, back and forth a few times to actually be able to resolve an issue. So uh, you can check the status here by uh, simply clicking uh, the check mark to check the status of the post. Right. And then the second part of the automation is triggered where it basically looks at the post, looks at the responses and uh, takes a conclusion if the tech question is resolved or not or needs extra replies and then updates the status inside of the ticketing dashboard. Uh, automatically and if the post is solved either the human uh, moves it to solved or uh, the, the or the automation detects that it's solved then uh, it will trigger this last uh, workflow which basically updates the circle post uh, where it marks it as solved inside of the title so let me show you a quick demo so if i just uh, add a tech question here in the tech help section uh, let me add a post that someone already mentioned so for example uh, connect Appify to Relevance AI. How to connect, uh, or how do I connect Appify to Relevance AI? Just as an example. So if I go back here, now I can't show you live, but here I can show you an execution so they now will get triggered. Now I'll uh, fast forward this quickly to show you the end result. So it succeeded. Now, as you can see, the agent uh, posted back. So if I go back now to the post and I refresh, the agent answered. So hi there, connecting Appify to Redmond AI is definitely possible. All right, step one, get your uh, Appify API details, use Relevance AI's API call, configure the API call. All right, and it even uh, mentions some of the past uh, posts that talked about this subject subject as you can see here we have another post about it and here's another one with a video so you can see 
what it does. So in this case, there were there was past information in the community about this. So it mentions those past articles. Otherwise, it will use uh, perplexity. So if I go back here, I can show you quickly what happened in the background. So the webhook, of course, I added into Circle, which then uh, triggered this API call uh, from Circle to get the details from the API call. So you can see we got the status, the name of the post. I can show you in schema or JSON. Right, and we get the the text of the post back. Now, of course, we pass that into the AI agent here. And the AI agent, as you can see, used in this case only the search tool because you could actually find an answer inside of the community. So this search tool basically is an API call to uh, Circle, to the community, uh, to do a search. And that search basically looks for if there are relevant uh, posts in the past about this specific topic. And if so, it'll use that uh, to reply. And if not, it will use the perplexity tool. So if you can, maybe we can check another one where it actually used perplexity. You can see in this case, it did use perplexity. So that's it. And then of course it uses again here, the circle po uh, API to post it back into the into the post, into the community. Now, of course, here also in the Airtable, it adds a new ticket. So if I go back to uh, Airtable, you can see it's also added here in new. Now, this is basically for us to manage and to make sure that we resolve all the tech issues. So here I can just also click on go to post, right, to, to resolve it, all right? So I can say, uh, I don't know, uh, just as an example, uh, go to uh, Appify and, uh, check uh, this page all right just as an example and then uh, for example i can uh, go back there and then i can move it to uh, replied or actually that we can let the agent do this because it can automatically do it so the way i do it here is i can just check status Now, of course, it comes from my own account, so probably won't move it to reply. Ah, it actually did. So you can see it automatically updated it to replied, right? And it can also identify if it's actually solved. So let's say I just add there, I solved it. Thank you very much. So basically that second flow sort of interprets if the extra comments of other people result the actual question of the user or not. And based on that, it moves it through the pipelines. I solved it. Thank you very much. And so if we do it again right now, and we check the status, you can see now it moves it to solved. So that's how the ticketing system works. So now it should also have updated the post here um, to solved. So usually it updates the title here to solved. And that's basically a system. Uh, but you can see, you can probably adapt this to many other use cases you would have in, in uh, community management or maybe even customer support. So let me walk you through step-by-step -step, um, through these flows here. Uh, and again, if you want the template, you can always check out the description below. So of course, first of all, uh, this automation gets triggered as soon as someone adds a question in the tech help section inside of my community uh, through this webhook, right? So I've just added this webhook inside of my uh, circle account to basically be triggered as soon as someone uh, posts something. Now I'll not show you this in detail because I can imagine you no, you don't use uh, circle, but this would be a very similar process for any other maybe community platform you'd use, uh, for example, school or discord, uh, or even Slack, uh, Slack would have a, a separate trigger a native integration actually, but it would be a similar setup. So in this case, I've set up the webhook, um, uh, with, to allow for multiple HTTP methods because we use the same webhook for a post method and a get method. Now the post method is the one uh, that will be uh, triggered as soon as someone asks a question in the circle community. And the get one is the one we set up uh, for checking the status from the Airtable and to mark the post as resolved, which also comes from the, from the Airtable. Now you could also separate this into three webhooks, but we like to you keep it clean. That's why we use the same webhook. So as soon as it gets triggered, of course, we, uh, get the circle post. And this is basically all we do is we pass in the post ID, which we get here from the webhook to retrieve the, the details from the post. Now, again, I won't, I won't show the circle API in detail because I can imagine it's not very relevant to you, but you can just, if you have it, find the documentation page of circle to find the exact details. But all this API call does, this HTTP request is to get back all the details from the post. And uh, from there, of course, we create uh, the ticket inside of Airtable here. 
Airtable has a native integration here in NADN. Uh, we work a lot with Airtable uh, for management of, of these systems. Uh, but you can see we send over the post title, the post detail, the user email, the username, the status, uh, which is new, of course, because we're creating the ticket, the topics, the post URL, and the user ID. Uh, and then, of course, we pass it over to the AI agent, which I showed you uh, before. Now, what do we pass over here in the prompt? We send uh, the post title, the post body, and the tools. Um, the tools is basically inside of my community. We have uh, different sections for different uh, softwares, no code tools. So, relevant say I make.com and then it ends. Uh, which we also pass over here to the agent because of course it helps uh, with context on the issue uh, then for the the, po the prompt uh, i can go through it very quickly so you're the official assistant for ben ai community your task is to answer member uh, questions accurately and helpfully always deliver uh, your responses clearly and consistently in html format now critical workflow follow this exact sequence always use the search tool first so the search tool basically goes through this, uh, the past circle posts to try and uh, find a similar topic, uh, to try and find answers uh, that have been given to a similar query before and sort of prioritize that over uh, the next option, which is uh, the perplexity tool, right? So if similar questions exist, use those answers into your response. If search results are insufficient, use the perplexity tool. Now, and of course the advantage of perplexity can also link uh, resources and sites resources, which you can add into the, the answer. Be very specific when you ask perplexity tool, don't be vague. Then we give an example of the HTML output because we want to have it sort of nicely formatted and some important rules. Uh, and then we also add in the confidence level criteria. So uh, we have high if it's com confirmed by multiple reliable sources, medium uh, if it's limited sources available or minor assumptions necessary, low if information is scarce or sources conflict. Now, this you could also use, let's say I have a use case where you have a little bit more of a critical workflow. You can't have uh, your agent answer anything that might be wrong. Uh, then you can also, for example, use this to route uh, your automation into a human in the loop. For example, let's say the confidence level is low. Uh, you can add in a structured output. If the confidence level is low, then route it to a human in the loop, uh, or maybe just add it to Airtable and leave it to a human. Uh, but you can uh, you can use this. You can even use in another agent to make that evaluation or even research even more if the confidence level is, is low. So you can adjust this system uh, like that too. So that's it. Then for the two tools, of course, we use Google Gemini in this one, uh, the 2.0. We, we use it a lot because it's free. And then uh, we have the search tool again, which is a circle API call to basically just uh, use the search function to uh, search for past posts that might have similar answers, right? So it's basically this sort of function. Um, so that's it. And then we have the perplexity tool, I think it speaks for itself. And of course it uses the circle API to uh, post the comment back uh, to, to the original post. Now for the, uh, this part, for the check status, uh, this of course is to check the status of a post and it's done from Airtable, right? So uh, from Airtable you have here a tab, which is automation. So if you want to trigger web hosts uh, from things that happen inside of Airtable, you have to go here to automations and you can see we have two uh, automations set up, the check status and the ticket solved. So if I go to the check status, the trigger is simply when check status is marked. So when we click there in the data on check status, that's the trigger. And then to trigger a webhook, we always want to uh, use run a script here. Uh, now we use always, almost always this type of script here and here. I'll also make sure to add this to the to the free free template. And with this script, we can define an action and a webhook URL, right? So we just add in a webhook URL there. And this action is important. You can see this is check status because this is basically what defines which route it goes. So you can see we have a switch mod module uh, node here, and this one is for check status, and the other one is for solved ticket. All right, so that's how we are able to use the same webhook. Again, you could use three webhooks, but we like to keep it clean. So uh, that's it. So that's how it gets triggered. Uh, maybe I can show you this flow with an example. So you can start a little bit better. So let's see. So in this one uh, speaks for itself. I think we get all the information from the Airtable first, uh, just all the, all the information. Then we uh, get the circle comments. So we get all the new comments to check for the status, right? If it's actually resolved. So we get, uh, you know, American sort of JSON, we get uh, all the answers, right? Then we, all we do here in the edit fields is we map all the records, as you can see, because we don't need the rest. Then here in the split out, 
we split split out over the comments, right? Because we don't need the rest. So we split out all the comments. Then we clean it up a bit uh, with the HTML to Markdown because we want to generally uh, transfer clean data over to the over to the AI steps later. It's just good practice. And then uh, what we do here is uh, we do manual mapping because we basically want to add in the name, the username, right? To see who actually responded uh, and then the comment, right? To also check, for example, if I was the one who created a post and then later I say uh, I, I resolved it, then this, the AI step will know how to update the status, right? If someone else says it, it might not be as relevant. Uh, so that's, that's how we... Basically, we map uh, this for each of the comments, right? You can see, and then we aggregate all the comments together into one, as you can see here. So we can pass it over to the NNM chain. And so we pass in the post title, post description, the time since posted and all the comments. Here we have the prompt. You're an AI customer support agent responsible for analyzing tech support posts. You'll receive a support query input st uh, structured clearly containing these details, post title, post description, time since posted, and the comments, of course. So based on the provided details, your job is to clearly understand the technical issue, determine if the provided comments contain sufficient resolution information to indicate the problem has been resolved, uh, provide a clear and concise single line recommendation for the next resolution step, and then accurately identify the current status from the following options based on the, these rules. Right, so we have solved, if the issue described in the post is clearly resolved, not replied, if there are no comments or there's only one comment from the Ben AI agent, which of course is not counted in as replied. Urgent resolution, if the issue remains unresolved for one day or more without any replies and replied if comment exists uh, beyond just Ben AI's uh, agent's initial comment. Uh, so that's how we will update the status. Then we use a structured output here to uh, define, the, define the status. And then of course that will be updated here in the error table, the status. And that's it. And of course, if it's then resolved, then it will automatically trigger this automation, which I can show you. If we go back here to the air table, we have the same sort of automation set up here. Of course, when status is solved, then run this script and then it will run that same webhook, but now with the action solve ticket. And then it will route it here. And this is pretty straightforward. Again, we get all the details from the air table record. And then we post a circle comment that this post has been marked as resolved and it updates the title too. So again, this is just a circle API. You can see a circle API and we just update the title. Uh, so that's it. I think a pretty specific build uh, for this one, but I think sort of the architecture and if you have a similar use case, it might be helpful for you. Again, if you want to copy uh, the template, you can just go ahead and, and go in the link in the description. And uh, if you need help in adjusting this template and making, uh, making it for your use case, uh, you can either uh, contact us to work with our agency or uh, join our community where we can also help you uh, with one-on-one -on -one tech help to help you adjust these templates maybe for your specific use case. Anyway, I hope this was a helpful, although a pretty specific use case. Uh, if you like this video, I highly appreciate a, a like and a subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope to see you next one. Bye-bye.